Welcome boys and girls to another day of learning. My name is Miss Shakita and I will be your co-teacher today. And this is Miss Lydia and she will be your teacher. We will also have a special guest to introduce to you all later. It is so good to see you. Today we're going to be learning about fish. That's right, Ms. Shakita. Today we're going to build off what we have already been learning. You will remember in previous lessons that we learned about vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrate animals have a backbone and invertebrate animals do not have a backbone. You will also remember that there are five groups of vertebrate animals. To help us remember that, we can look at this chart and remember our mnemonic, all my best friends represent vertebrates. A mnemonic device is a rhyme that helps us remember things. Repeat the mnemonic after me. All my best friends represent vertebrates. Great job. Today we will focus on the F for friends in the mnemonic which stands for fish. Fish are vertebrates. Miss Shakita, do you remember what a vertebrate is? Hmm. A vertebrate is an animal with a backbone. That's right. A vertebrate is an animal with a backbone. And amphibians, mammals, birds, fish, and reptiles are all vertebrates. They all have backbones. This mnemonic, all my best friends represent vertebrates, can help us remember which animal groups are vertebrates. You'll remember from our previous lessons that scientists classify animals. Scientists classify animals by their characteristics. Characteristics are features or qualities that make one group different from another. Some characteristics of, that scientists classify animals by are cold-blooded and warm-blooded, vertebrate and invertebrate, and so much more. Today, we are going to be looking I'm sorry, rather today we are going to be talking about vertebrate animals, but they are only a tiny percent of the animal population on Earth. We are far outnumbered by the many types of vertebrate animals on Earth. To get us started today, we are going to go over some of the key vocabulary words that you will need to know in order to make meaning of our read aloud today. Today's reading will be from an informational text, a science text. You will remember that one of the features of informational text is how vocabulary words are presented in that text. As we are reading today, you will hear our vocabulary word, the definition, and then the text is going to help us explain that word. The first word today we will be learning is aquatic. It means having to do with water. Fertilizes is our next word. It means to make ready for development. The next word we will be learning today is gills. Gills are the organs that fish use to breathe the oxygen in the water. You can see with this image that the arrow is pointing to the gills on the fish. The next word we are going to learn today is lungs. Lungs are the breathing organs of vertebrates that breathe oxygen. Respiratory is our next word. Respiratory is having to do with the act of breathing. Next is scales. Scales are the many hard, small plates that cover the skin of most types of fish. Our last word is spawn. To spawn is to deposit eggs into the water, which then become fertilized or ready for development. Hey, Miss Shakita, do you want to play a game? Yes, that sounds like fun. Great. We're going to play a game called Clues. I'm going to give you some clues about some of the animal classifications that you've been learning, and I'm going to see if you can infer or guess based on what you already know and what we've learned today. Okay, so I have to infer. Oh my God, that's going to be so fun. All right, here we go. I'm a cold-blooded member of the animal kingdom. I am found swimming in fresh water or salt water. Hmm. Oh, I have some ideas based on what I already know. I can take the facts that I have learned and put them with what I already know and I have a few guesses. I don't want to guess just yet. Give me a few more. Oh, I'm so glad you're using your new knowledge with what you already know to make some inferences about the animal that I'm talking about. 
Your next clue is I move around using my fins and I breathe oxygen through my gills underwater. Oh, I know, I know. Friends at home, do you know what animal Miss Lydia is talking about? Hmm, I have one last clue. If I don't swim away fast enough from humans and they pick me up, they will feel the hard scales that cover my body and they may even eat me. What's the answer, friends? Miss Shakita, do you know? Is it a fish? That's right, great job. Friends at home, did you get that right? I'll bet you did because you used your inferring skills to make a guess. Now we are going to turn our attention to today's read aloud. Sometimes before we read about a topic, we wanna to ask questions about what we're going to read. Miss Shakita, is there anything that you want to learn about fish? Let's see. I would like to learn how they are able to breathe underwater. I know they use their gills because that was one of the vocabulary words, but what about all that water? I know, that is such a great question. Miss Shakita, let's check out our read aloud to see if we can answer your question. Oh, I forgot, we have a special guest reader today. Miss Candy is going to read our read aloud as Rattenboro, so Miss Shakita and I can learn all the facts about fish. Take it away, Rattenboro. Hello, everyone. I'm back after a delightful rest. Today, I'm going to tell you more about my friend Paolo Piranha and the group to which he belongs. So far, you've learned that scientists classify living things by common characteristics in order to study them and show relationships. You have learned about cold-blooded and warm-blooded animals. Who remembers if Paolo is cold-blooded or warm-blooded and can explain what that means? Paolo is cold-blooded and that means his body temperature changes to its surroundings. Ah, bravo. That's right. Paolo Piranha's internal body temperature varies with his surroundings. When Paolo is swimming in warm water, his body temperature is higher than when he is swimming in the cold water. His body temperature is not constant. It makes adjustments to the surrounding temperature easily. Who remembers another way scientists classify animals? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with bones. Miss Candy, is it that some animals have backbones and some animals do not have backbones? You are right. Some animals have backbones. What's another word for animals with backbones? Yes, animals with backbones are called vertebrates, and those without backbones are called? Invertebrates. Right, friends at home? Yes, invertebrates. Paolo is one of many kinds of animals capable of swimming. Having a strong backbone is one type of body design that helps Paolo and other fish to be good swimmers. You have also learned a little bit about taxonomy, the science of classification. Fish are members of animalia, or the animal kingdom, just like you and me, but they belong to a different animal group. What word did you hear in animalia? Animal. That's right, animalia is Latin for animal. You are a mammal like Hilda Hippo and myself. Ebenezer is a bird and Paolo is a fish. Fish are vertebrates and they are cold-blooded. There are many different types and sizes of fish represented by many species. Today, I'm going to teach you a little more about aquatic species of animals that are classified as fish. So to say that in three words, fish are aquatic. They don't live on land, they live in water. All species of fish are aquatic. Fish make up the largest group of vertebrates on Earth. Let's take a look at my slide that shows a view of the planet Earth from space. Miss Lydia, can you make a guess as to what the green and blue mean in this image? Yes, I think that the green represents land and the blue represents the water on Earth. You are right. 
there is a lot more water than land. Nearly three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Fish are swimming about in the Earth's waters, from ponds and streams to rivers, lakes, and oceans. They have adapted to almost every water habitat on Earth, except for some very hot springs and the extremely salty Dead Sea. Aside from these places, fish can live anywhere. It's no wonder that fish make up the largest group of vertebrates on Earth. Most of these wet, watery fish habitats are salty because most of the Earth's water is salt water. If you ever swim in the ocean, you may get a little taste of the salty sea. Sharks, cod, and flounder are all saltwater fish. Freshwater fish live in lakes, rivers, streams, and ponds. What do you think freshwater is? Bass and trout are common freshwater fish, and some humans actually find them very tasty. Come to think of it, I find fish quite delicious when I can get my paws on fish scraps. Some fish, such as salmon, spend part of their lives in freshwater rivers and part in the salty sea water. Salmon begin their lives in rivers where they stay for anywhere from six months to three years, depending on the species. Then they make an often dangerous journey out to the sea, facing predators and changing water temperatures along the way. They live in the saltwater ocean for about four years before returning to the freshwater rivers to lay their eggs. Their migration often covers several hundred miles. Let's stop for a moment to think about the different ways that taxonomists classify Paolo, the South American piranha from the Amazon River. He's a cold-blooded aquatic vertebrate. He's a fish, to be sure. The question is whether he is a saltwater fish or a freshwater fish. Which of these types of water is his home? Freshwater. That's right, a freshwater river. Paolo's home is the Amazon River, one of the largest rivers in the world. Piranhas live in freshwater environments, mostly rivers so they are classified as freshwater fish. Sometimes animals are classified by their physical characteristics. Though piranhas do have very sharp teeth, they are not the bloodthirsty carnivores they are sometimes perceived to be, always ready to attack humans. Indeed, members of the red-bellied species of piranha do hunt the meat of other fish in large groups. But that's not all they eat. Most piranhas are omnivores. You have reviewed carnivores and omnivores earlier in this domain. Who can tell me what the difference is? An omnivore eats both plants and meat, and carnivores only eat meat. That's right, Miss Lydia. As omnivores, most piranha eat both animals and plant eating seeds and fruit that fall into the water. Many piranhas also feed on carrion, animals that have already died. You will continue to hear about the different foods that many different animals eat. This will help you describe animals. Later you will hear about how the size and shape of the animal's teeth give you clues about what they eat. You already know several common characteristics of fish, but there are more. Can you think of any others? I'll give you a hint. You know that all animals need to breathe oxygen in order to live. Fish do not have lungs, so we have to wonder how in the world, or in this case underwater, do they breathe? Ms. Shakita, wasn't that your question from the beginning? Yes, I can't wait to find out. Well, look closely at this fish and see if you can spot its breathing machine. The respiratory or breathing organs of a fish are called gills. All fish have gills. 
Fish take water in through their mouths and the water passes over their gills. The gills take in oxygen from the water, allowing them to breathe. You will die quickly if you don't get enough air because you draw oxygen out of the air. But fish will die quickly if they do not have water because their oxygen comes from the water. The African lungfish is the only fish I know that has lungs in addition to gills and can survive out of the water. We call this an exception to the rule or a pattern breaker. Before the dry season, when the water dries up and leaves a sun-baked riverbed behind, the lungfish buries itself deep in the mud and builds a cocoon-like sheath around itself, staying there for a year or more until water returns to the river. Okay, fish breathe with gills and you breathe with lungs. That's one big difference between you and fish. Ms. Shakita, did that answer the question you had from the beginning of our read aloud? Yes, that is so fascinating how they take the oxygen out of the water. I'm glad my question was answered. That's great. Now, let's find another difference between you and fish. Think about how you swim with your arms and legs, of course. Take a close look at the fish. Do you see any arms and legs? No, indeed. So what helps a fish move through the water? Yes, a fish has fins, all kinds of fins. It has fins on the side of its body for steering, fins at the back for powerful speed, and fins at the top and bottom to help keep its balance. Fish couldn't begin to move without those wonderfully flat fins and their flexible tails. Have you ever worn flippers? Flippers are designed to be like fish tails to help people move more quickly through the water. Well, everybody, you've spotted the gills and fins of a fish. But what about the rest of a fish's body? What about the skin? Hey, look at me. There I am taking a close look at a fish skin through my magnifying glass. Fish skin is very different from your skin. Fish have scaly skin to help protect them and help them move more easily through the water. These hard, overlapping scales are rounded and smooth. And fish have more than one layer of skin, just like you. Most fish, such as salmon, goldfish, tuna, and eel, spawn or reproduce in a very unique way. When fish spawn, the mother releases her eggs into the water and the male fertilizes them or makes them complete and able to grow into baby fish. Once these soft eggs are fertilized, they are often buried along the river bottom. Here they develop and eventually hatch into tiny fish called larvae, the early form of fish. Some sharks, on the other hand, are among the few examples of live bearing fish. Almost the opposite of external spawning, the mother shark's eggs develop internally remaining inside her body until they are born as live young rather than eggs. Earth's underwater world, Palo's world, is a fascinating place, much of which has not yet been explored. Perhaps some of you will become scientists and study aquatic creatures like Palo. Today, we've only talked about fish but not all sea animals are fish. There are many other vertebrates in the ocean, such as dolphins, sea snakes, and sea turtles. The sea is also home to tens of thousands of species of invertebrates, animals you may have seen before, such as crabs, clams, sand dollars, and squid. Let's review the characteristics of fish. How many fish characteristics can you name? 
Well, I learned one characteristic is that fish take oxygen out of the water using their gills. I have learned the characteristics that fish are cold-blooded, which means that their bodies reflect the temperature around them. That's right. Friends at home, can you name another characteristic that we have learned? Great job. They also use their fins to swim, they lay eggs, and they have bony skeletons. Thanks, Miss Candy. I sure did learn a lot about fish. What about you, friends at home? Miss Shakita, what do you say we ask a few questions about what we have learned today? After all, it is important to apply what we've learned. Great idea. All right, first question. What does the word aquatic mean? That's right, friends. It means having to do with water. Miss Shakita, in what sort of ha aquatic habitat do fish live? Hmm. Well, fish can live in ponds, lakes, rivers, streams, and oceans. Basically, wherever there is water. That's right. It also doesn't matter if it is salt water or fresh water. Okay, next question. This one's for you too, Miss Shakita. Can you describe the functions of a, the respiratory organs of a fish? Oh, I can. That was my question when we started at the beginning, so now I definitely can answer that. The respiratory organs of a fish help it to breathe. Fish use their gills to take the oxygen out of the water. That's right. How cool you were able to have your question answered. Okay, friends at home, now it's your turn. Why are the scales an important characteristic of fish? That's right, they offer protection and they help them move through the water. My next question is, imagine that you and a friend are having a debate on whether or not a shark is a fish. How would you convince your friend that a shark is a fish? Hmm, hmm. what do you say friends at home? Those are some great answers. I would tell my friend that sharks live in water and have gills, which is how they get oxygen out of the water. They have scaly skin and their tails help them move through the water. Okay, last question. Let's identify some of the common characteristics that fish and humans have in common. I'll go first. They both can be omnivores, which means they eat both plants and animals. Miss Shakita, can you name one characteristic that's the same between humans and fish? Mm, yes, um, fish and herman both breathe oxygen, just in different ways. That's right. Friends at home, can you identify one of the characteristics we haven't said? Did you say that they both can move in water? Or both are vertebrates? Great, we have learned so many things about fish. Yes, we have. And thanks for being such good readers with us while we learn about fish today. We'll be back soon to, to learn more about these amazing animals. All rights and credits for today's lesson belong to Core Knowledge Language Arts. We would like to thank them for publicly sharing these valuable resources. The views and opinions expressed in today's lesson are those of the Core Knowledge authors and do not necessarily reflect the opinions or official policy or positions of the Mississippi Department of Education. Bye, friends.